Hello everyone, welcome to Citacoder. Uh, I know you haven't seen videos from me in two weeks. That is because I was actually sick and lost my voice. So that's why I wasn't able to post or create any content. So I'm sorry about that and you will see more videos from me coming up this week. Okay, so uh, if you are new, uh, my name is Ravina. Welcome to Citacoder. Uh, we are going to solve today problem number 253. That is meeting rooms 2. Okay, so let's start by reading the question. It says that given an array of meeting time interval intervals where interval of i is a start of i till end of i, return the minimum number of conference rooms required. So what we have been given is uh, we have been given intervals that those are actually start times and the end times. Uh, and we have to find out that how many minimum number of conference rooms we need. Okay, so for example, you know, uh, a particular meeting starts at nine o'clock from nine to 10 and the other meeting starts from 10 to 11. So in this case, we can actually use just one conference room. We can do one meeting from nine to 10 and then we can use the same conference room from 10 to 11. So the minimum number of conference rooms that we needed was actually one. So that's what this problem is all about. We have been given an intervals array and here we have a start time and end time. And we have been asked to calculate how many number of minimum conference rooms we need. Okay, so uh, let's start by, uh, you know, going through the solution. Let me open my notepad here real quick. I've taken the same example uh, as example number one, but I have just shuffled some values here and there, and you'll understand why. Uh, now, what, how do we want to write the logic? The first thing that we need to do is we need to do some kind of comparison between the start time and the end times in order to determine, you know, how many rooms are we going to need. So we can either, you know, throw these uh, lists in some loops and, you know, go through them one by one. But uh, since we are, you know, if you're an in interview and you are thinking about it, this is actually a kind of common question that you know you come across and this kind of logic you'll see can be applied uh, you know in multiple uh, problems so let's see uh, since we have to do some kind of comparison between the start times and the end times and we also want to make sure that whatever is the comparison we have to do it in either ascending or the descending order what does that mean that means that if a particular uh, meeting is starting at you know, in this example at five, um, it we have to make sure that our end times are also sorted. But we also have to make sure that we do not lose the end time of our current meeting. And how are we going to do that? The first thing that we are going to do is we are going to sort our array by start time. And we are going to use a heap for our end times so that our minimum heap will automatically sort our end times. So let's see how we can do this. Uh, the first thing is I'm going to sort my list by start time. So by, if I sort it by start time, this becomes my first element since zero. And then after zero comes five. So it becomes five, 10. And then in the end, I have 15 and 20. Okay, now I have my start time sorted. The next thing that I need is I need my heap. So I will have a heap here, which is kind of imaginary right now. Okay, to start with, what I'll do is I will um, add an end time to my heap. So I'm going to grab the first end time that I have, which is 30, and I'm going to drop it to my heap. And since this is my heap, it will be, it is the only element in my heap. So it's going to be the root. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each and every interval, starting from the first position and going all the way to the end. So when I come across the first, uh, the first element, not the zero, remember, this is zero, this is one, this is two. So I come here. I get the start time. I get the start time, which is five. And I check, is my start time 
greater than or equal to my uh, n time in the heap uh, if you look at it 5 is not greater than or equal to 30 so what are we really checking is did my meeting start later than the end time uh, is that true no 5 is not greater then what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply add my current end time to my heap so I add my current end time to my heap so since 10 is actually smaller than 30 uh, the heap is gonna create it's gonna you know rearrange itself so that 10 comes on the top okay now we move on we move on to our next index we check in the next index we get 15 we check is 15 greater than or equal to the top of my heap so 15 is greater than 10 that means that this particular meeting started at 15 and the previous meeting ended at 10 that means one room can actually be utilized that was previously occupied but is free now so what it's going to happen is we are going to pop out the end time from the heap so 10 is going to be popped out so this actually becomes as 30 and then we are going to insert the end time of the current meeting so when we insert the end time of the current meeting 20 becomes the root and then 30 stays there now we we have reached the end of our intervals right and we are looking at hmm so how many rooms do we actually need it's actually the length of the heap so we have a uh, two here in the heap and that means we need two rooms and that is actually the answer so if you look here that is output two that means we need two rooms here that is because for uh, you'll see that this particular meeting goes from 0 to 30 this goes from 5 to 10 and this for 15 to 20 these two meetings can actually use same conference room and that's what it is okay so let's see how we can uh, write code for it the first check that we are going to do is an edge case what if the intervals list is empty if that is empty that means that we can use zero conference rooms right and that's what we are going to check if intervals is none so basically if not intervals then you return zero and then the first thing what we did is sort our uh, intervals based on start time so we are going to do intervals dot sort uh, i'm going to use a lambda here and then my x is going to be x of 0 so basically this x of 0 is the first element in uh, the list of lists that we have so i have sorted it now second thing i need a heap right so i'm going to create a heap uh, i'm going to call it free rooms and then i am going to first what, what what did we do first first we need to insert the first element uh the first interval right so i'm going to do that uh, i'm going to do heap q dot heap push and i'm going to push in my free rooms free rooms and what am i going to push i'm going to push the end time of my first interval so my first intervals end time which is one so i have pushed my things i have done the pre-work here uh oh sorry this is intervals yeah so i've done my work here now i'm just gonna go through each and every interval and do the comparison so for every i in intervals starting from the first index since we already used up the zeroth index and we inserted that into our heap we are going to start with the first index and here we are going to check if my start time and what is my start time my start time is i of zero is my start time greater than or equal to my heaps top element so what is my heap my heap is free rooms and the top element would be zero so i'm just checking is there any meeting that has a start time greater than 
any of the end times of any of the meetings. And if it is true, then we are going to pop from the heap to make sure that we have less number of free rooms available. So we have heap Q dot uh, heap pop. And I'm going to pop the first element. So free and I'm going to pop from free rooms. OK, uh, once I do that, um, I also have to make sure that I, you know, push my end time, the current end time to my heap. So I'm going to do that. So heap Q dot heap push. I'm going to push to my free rooms uh, list. And what I'm going to push, I'm going to push the end time, which is I of one. Lastly, I'm going to return my length of my heap. So my heap is actually free rooms. So I'm going to do that. Now let's see if we can run it. Okay, let's submit. As you see, it beats 84% of the solutions. Now let's talk about the space and time complexity because uh, if I, I cannot insist it <laughs> uh, strong enough, space and time complexity are really important. Even if you are in an interview, you have to go through space and time complexities. Now let's talk about the time complexity of this. The time complexity here is if you look at this particular line, it is doing sort and the time complexity of sort is actually n log n. And we have a heap which is also doing hip push and heap pop that are all together n log n. So the time complexity of this particular algorithm is going to be n log n. Okay, now let's talk about the space complexity. Uh, if you look at this, uh, what we are using, what are we using? We are using a list and that's it. We are not using anything else. And how much, uh, how many elements does the list store? The list stores uh, n number of elements, right? So the space complexity is n log n, and the time complexity here is actually O of n. So the time complexity becomes O of n. Okay, so I hope this uh, explanation was helpful. The code for the solution will be on my GitHub channel, and you can find the link to that in the description below. If you like my videos, please give it a thumbs up, comment below. If you would want me to solve any problems that are of interest to you, please let me know in the comments. I wish you all a happy Wednesday, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.